What's up guys, Merc RS back with another CD game. Is this thing recording? Yes it is. Uh, <laughs> so we are rolling with MVR and we have a top tier battle. We've got some nice soft cruisers right there that I'm really thankful for WG releasing these light Japanese cruisers. It's been a while since we had these kind of things. Um, they're going to be uh, good food for MVR. <laughs> so this thing can eat again, you know. Uh, we've got three DDs, two subs, only two battleships for us, so a little bit trickier, a little bit trickier to work out, but hopefully we can get some good damage in and hopefully we can contribute to the team's performance here. Uh, I don't know the name of the map, but I should probably learn that for the sake of the intro, right? But um, let me just talk about some of my decisions here. So uh, I don't really, I didn't really concern myself too much with trying to find the DDs just yet. We've got some pretty good uh, DD fighting uh, DDs over here, um, so I, you know, I'm not too concerned about that. I never really spend the first half of the, the first flight trying to spot them. It's not really a big concern. Um, yeah, especially because with MVR, unlike the other ones that are suitably built to handle destroyers, this one is just not really designed for that too much. I do see that Immelman coming down the middle there, so I immediately think he might be coming for me, and then I have to think about the Masashi. That's partly why I take out these AP bombers here, because I want to check on him and make sure he's not going to be um, like trying to focus me either. Uh, just want to start working on him a little bit, you know. Uh, we do see that he does have a fighter, and the 7 kilometer range of that... Uh, okay, let's go for it. Takahashi? I think I pronounced it right. Um, is pretty dangerous, so we got to be careful. Uh, we do get one citadel on that drop. We turn away from the enemy um, cruiser, and you can see that I saved my heal for after the bomb drop, because I know I'm going to be taking more damage when I'm in the AA of two ships versus just the Masashi. So instead of saving the one plane, I potentially save two. So uh, don't always think that you need to use your heal to save the first plane. You know, that pilot that's on the right-hand side a little bit, you know, he's always going to die, so, <laughs> so you don't have to try and save him. Uh, Sevestipul, I never really encounter Sevestipul too much with, uh, because it's, I think, Research Bureau, right? And, um, you know, with MVR, I don't know, I just never run into it, so I figure I'd test that bomb drop on him. Uh, so here, we see that we've got the Seyung in... In the cap here with it. We're gonna just go check on this daring here. Make sure he's not trying to get back into this cap too much. And uh, yeah, let's see what we can do here. We see, do see that the enemy submarine is on that end, so here we go. We did double check daring, and there he is. Forced him to use the smoke. Probably in a spot he didn't want to use it, so it's all good. I know that I don't have my heal yet, so I don't want to fly into two ships, so uh, I'm just going to fly over this sub real quick. So hopefully, maybe we can spawn him, but uh, he is submerged, so not going to be able to do much there. So at this point, we're going to fly across the map here, and I do note, you know, the Takahashi is piloted by a good player, I think, if, if I remember this one correctly. So I've already directed my MVR to work on the other side. I, I want to go on the other end and operate over there than I want to on this on the other side. So because those guys are already in kiting, whereas these guys are in a cap and you know able to be targeted by the team a little bit more. Uh, we do see the Nusashimi kind of going really slow there, so we are able to do our torpedoes on him. Get a nice good hit there. He slows down. And uh, we are able to get him here. We torp in front of him a little bit because he is in a break position and no one's going to sit still that long being under, under intense fire. And we do get the hit and the kill. Uh, so Hawk is pretty isolated now, so we are definitely going to go for him at this juncture. And yeah, I'm uh, just trying to plot out, so let me pause this. If we look at the minimap, we see that if this uh, Windows thing will let me, okay, I guess it's not gonna let me. Let's just replay and let it disappear. So if you look at the minimap down there right now, um, you'll see that only the Hawk and the DD are, are really the main threats to me. The sub, 
not too big a threat with all teammates considered and automatic ASW. So if I can get rid of this Hawk, the Henry's not going to push in. He's going to have to run. So I'm trying to position for that late game scenario here by going into those rocks. Um, I do have to be conscious of the Musashi potentially getting a hit on me because that is a pretty aggressive angle. Um, so just keep that in mind. Uh, let me replay again because this is also something I want to talk about. Let's look at how I angle this because people have told me that they have trouble with MVR and lining up. You got to think about the enemy ship and its its uh, turn. What is he most likely to do when you're getting close? I mean, it's pretty clear this guy has to back up. I mean, he's already backing up here. Um, he's not going to go nose in to what, three ships there um, with the MVR coming. He, he's going to turn out. That's the most intelligent way to play. Um for most battleships. So we're gonna automatically start turning out to the right here. My key, what I wanna be doing is get far enough to the right that when I start my drop, I'm already, I'm hard turning to the left, so it's gonna be a nice lineup. So here, here's what I mean. Here we go, we're going wide, we got wide. And then we initiate our drop and we're hard turning to the left. As you can see, the speed is, is uh, hard breaking here. So I can make sure I get a nice lineup. And I'm gonna s drop it on this side of the ship because he is turning out, right? So the drift effect of his turn is gonna put him under the reticle. See, he's in the middle then. So that's, that is like 90% of the time when I do an AP bomb drop, that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, when there's a turn, you have to get wide so that you can hard turn it when you're doing the attack animation. Here, I'm not sure exactly which way he's turning. I thought he was going to keep turning wider a little bit. I don't know, but he just did kind of a weird thing. Regardless, though, we get one Citadel, so that's fine. Alright, so um, it's been a while since I used the rockets, so I decided to take those out. And uh, Hawk is dead, so we're just going to go check on Henry, I think, with this one. We're in a pretty good position for the team here. Pretty good, pretty good. There's Immelman. Just trying to see what we can spot here. Yeah, there's Henry. So that's who we go for. I don't know why I dropped that. I know I'm not going to catch him. But he recalls anyway, so... <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, you've seen some of my highlights with uh, using AP rockets. Sometimes, you know, on the easiest of ones, you just fuck up. <laughs> oh my god, that's so embarrassing. I was so mad after this attack. Like, he's driving the straight line for me. He's going like not full speed, and uh, only one Citadel on both runs. It's just super, super Unicum CV, right? Uh, but yeah, sometimes you mess up, you know, you make mistakes. Point is not to make so many mistakes, just reduce the amount of mistakes as much as possible, aka be as efficient as possible. I don't think my uh, logo is up, so sorry for this, or the um, CV Doctrine. Okay, now it's up. Um, yeah, so we're going for Musashi here, it's a little isolated, finally, get a good hit. Just one Citadel. Three. It's a nice lineup, though, at the very least. Yeah, Musashis are, are really great targets. The, the whole Japanese battleship line is just fantastic target. Because of their weak AA and... Um, yeah, just easy penetrability when it comes to the deck. And uh, you, we have three bombs here. I usually would not go for this for any other type of BB. But when it's a Japanese battleship, yeah, it's worth it. Usually able to get three off. And we do that time. See how he turned into it a little bit? So. Alright. Let's see. We're going to go with Torps because we got our heal ready. Good trying to do good plane management. Trying to rotate. Always keep that in mind. I hope I... No, I don't drop a fighter there. I would have I would have dropped a fighter. <laughs> Alright, Musashi. 
He's being targeted by a lot of HE, right? So it's actually a really good target. Plus, he's the most obvious target, you know. There's nothing else that you're really going to target right now. I'm not going to fly into a fighter to drop this. Or am I? Yeah. I'm not going to get a second flight anyway, I guess is my thought process here. So we just drop that there. We are in our ideal position. Take the bombs out again. You know who we're going for. Right now I see the Takahashi. Takayashi, uh, Takahashi. And uh, I'm immediately thinking uh, AP rocket time. <laughs> I love... This is, this is what I live for. For uh, the... For playing MVR, man. I, I love the moments that are... The moment that's about to come. It's just so much fun. Uh, so we get that good hit. We're gonna turn. Just hurt this guy. I think I, I turned that Sylvester Pool. Probably should have turned that Henry there. And bam. Two Citadels right there. Nice. Hardcore, man. Take our rockets, and we see our golden opportunity. Um, so yeah, Takahashi is a light cruiser, and um, it's been a while, so with, with MVR, you need these light cruisers in the game. So anytime there's a, an update, it's probably, and it's a light cruiser, it's always good to take these out. I dropped this fighter. I dropped the fighter right there, because I sometimes the fighter can do a quick spot for you on something. So you'll see me use it on like a DD or something that's in a cap to just try and hopefully get a spot ahead of the rockets that I'm using. Um, and But you can often do it against cruisers too. Oh, so you throw the fighter hoping that it'll get on the other side of the mountain or on top of the mountain so it can spot for you and you can better line this up. Uh, I think the black does use radar so he kind of gives me a hint a little bit earlier than, um, than what I would have gotten. So... Let's just stop talking about it. Let's just see it. Only two hits there, but we fired at such a distance that we don't have to fly over him and eat more defensive AA. So we hit, we had hit the hard breaks, and we get a nice other hit there for 16k. So I love those challenging moments. That's more of a physical challenge than anything, like a reaction time kind of thing than a, my overall. You know, map awareness and strategy thinking type of approach. Always good to change it up. This guy's going to sit on the cap. Um, he's he's capping right now, so I know that that's what he's going to be doing. So we're just going to try and plot accordingly for that. I throw these torps because he's already turning, and I want to get uh, I want to have enough planes to be able to line up for the actual hit that's going to make contact. At the very least, that just keeps him in a straight line. Which is often something you should consider. And we get him. Now, this is where it gets a little trickier. Right now I'm thinking, okay, that sub has a free way to me. So I need to take that into consideration. How am I going to deal with that, etc. Um, so let's see what we do. AP rockets are definitely useful versus DDs. Uh, if especially if you can get the broadside, you know it, it's better than nothing. <laughs> That's for sure. So here we go. Oh yeah, I'm just worried about that sub now. And uh, this is kind of the tricky spot, man. It's a uh, I kind of messed up there, not going to lie. Um, that sub is definitely going to be on me. Autopilot fucking me up here. I don't take the time to correct it, so that's a mistake. Clebert dies, so now it's really just one on four. One on five, I mean. Right here, I just want to focus. I could like maybe target the Immelman or something like that. I mean, probably not actually. But the thing is, I could, I want to just try and stop them from capping <laughs> as much as possible. So um, 
you know, I'm kind of worried about that sub. He's got to be on me at this point. So I'm just trying to minimize how much damage I'm taking. The ability to turn out is gone. And that's all my mistake, you know. Uh, here, I go for it. I, I see if I can make this. And we could have. We didn't line it up perfectly, though. Kind of screw that one up. That would have been so boss, though. Tight. Got to try and do a hard turn here. The rock is going to mess it up. Uh, yeah, we get it. No Citadel, though. So let's just keep getting this Henry. Again, fighter, just to see if I can get a peek at what he's doing. There's the bad news <laughs> that just popped up next to me. <laughs> and uh, I make another mistake here. So despite all the successes, you know, you can st still make mistakes. So I take the AP bombers out. Thinking I can work on Sevestival, but then I'm like, oh wait, I want the rockets! Let me go back and try and get them off, but too late. So, another mistake. The rockets would have been the better choice, because the daring is the one who's the most possible to cap. So, so uh, you know, 260, I want the win. So, <laughs> the battle is not over yet for me, man. You can still fight. So, <laughs> I try and throw them off with the sub. But uh, they already know he's, he's going to be over here because their ships are spotted and stuff. So we do get the W. They don't end up finding him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we get 261k damage, 20 citadels, not too bad at all. And we get uh, 2800 base XP with 4 kills in the Rick Dolphin. So it's still viable, still my favorite CV. Probably going to do another one here before I get to work. And uh, yeah, hope you guys liked it. GG!